everyone. Today, I'm very happy to give this lecture at Anai Asia Machine Learning School at ACML 2021. This lecture is about graph representation learning and its application. Let me briefly introduce myself. Now I am an associate professor at Institute of Data Science at NCKU Taiwan. My research expertise is about uh, graph machine learning and uh, natural language processing and have then applied to uh, different kinds of tasks, including social media analysis, recommender system, financial technology, and the smart health. Here are some facts I would like to let you know before this lecture. First, this lecture is not a tutorial. We will not present how to train a better neural network model. We will also not cover fancy or state-of-the-art uh, graph neural network method. We will also not uh, give many too many details about math due to the time limit. We will mainly focus on deliver the best idea of graph representation learning and uh, how they can be applied to different uh, tasks and the domain. Uh, we will use uh, several uh, showcases uh, to demonstrate uh, the application part. In addition, uh, some of the uh, material in this lecture are extended from uh, CS224W. It, it, this is a grad machine learning class at Stanford University. We uh, especially appreciate and uh, thanks to Professor Yuri Deskov and the CS224W's team. Uh, as you may know that graph data is universal. For example, we have the social network that connects user using their friendships. We uh, are on uh, e-commerce platforms. We have a user and item, especially we have their interactions, then we can uh, build the bipartite graph. Uh, for the current Internet of Things, we have a graph that, that can link different kinds of devices and uh, have uh, different kinds of message or data that uh, communicates be between devices. Also, we, we can also construct a world co-occurrence graph or a Wikipedia can be considered as a knowledge graph. Even in the biomedical domain, we have protein-protein interaction. In graph machine learning, there are two typical tasks. One is no classification. Given a graph in which some nodes are labeled, like these green and blue nodes, the goal of no classification is to train a model that can accurately predict the remaining unlabeled node, like this black node. It can be applied to uh, you know, public opinion analysis, online advertising, even uh, in biomedical domain protein analysis. For example, we can uh, try to predict the sentiment of user uh, in a social network so that we can understand the political tendency uh, of users and for the decision making. The other task is link prediction. Given a graph, the task of link prediction is to predict whether uh, a pair of nodes will connect with each other in the future. It can be used uh, to suggest friends in social network and uh, to recommend item to user in a uh, user item by graph uh, for recommendation and the advertisements. And we can also construct a graph that can depict the relationship between side effects, drug, and the drug-drug interactions. Then we can consider the side effect prediction as a kind of link prediction task. Link prediction can be also widely applied to uh, predict whether two paper will, uh, one will side uh, the other and uh, try to predict the diffusion cascades and also predict the uh, polypharmacy side effects. To perform such two tasks, we need graph representation. Given a graph, the corresponding representation is to construct a feature matrix in which each row is a node, each column is the feature. We may need to do feature engineering to extract nodes, degree, centrality, and parent values, so on and so forth, to construct the feature vector of each node, then apply machine learning models uh, for node classification and link prediction. However, the feature engineering is tedious. We cannot always guarantee 
of the effective feature can be extracted. Instead, we may re resource to feature learning, and the learning can help us to count to generate the latent feature matrix. And uh, I believe the latent feature matrix uh, can better perform than the uh, existing handcraft feature. Now we can briefly write down the test of graph representation learning. The input is the graph, then the output is a feature matrix in which each node will have a B-dimensional feature vector. Then we expect the uh, representation vector of each node can encode the graph structure. The learning of node representation can be also turned as embedding learning uh, to generate the embedding vector. The main idea is to preserve proximity. We want the similarity between two nodes embedding can indicate the proximity between nodes. For example, we want those nodes that share common neighbor can have similar embedding vector in the corresponding embedding space. Like these uh, purple nodes, they are be uh, neighbor with each other, then we want their embedding vec vector to close with each other in the embedding space. In graph representation learning, there are two mainstream approach. The first is unsupervised GIO, and the second is semi-supervised GIO. The unsupervised GIO is also turned as uh, network embedding. Uh, it is a two-stage approach. The first stage is to generate uh, no embedding without using any no label. The second stage is to apply the learn no embedding to different kinds of downstream tests like no classification and link prediction. The semi supervised GIO is also turned as graph neural network, GNN. It is an end to end learning that combines the embedding learning with downstream tasks. We first briefly uh, illustrates the idea of uh, these two approaches. For unsupervised GIO, we are given a graph and we have different kinds of work approach like metric factorization based, random work based, and neural network based approach. They can map each node into a low dimensional feature space. Then after this learning, uh, we can use in the derived uh, low embedding vector and have uh, use it to change, uh, for example, a classification model to perform no classification. We can also concat the no embedding together and change another binary classifier to predict whether these two nodes will have link in the future. For semi-supervised GIO, it is an end-to-end -end training procedure. Uh, it will stack multiple hidden layer in a neural network structure. Uh, each hidden layer consists of two operation, aggregation and combine to generate uh, each layer's uh, no embedding. We will uh, combine this hidden layer together and uh, have it chain with uh, downstream tasks like no classification, graph classification, and link prediction together. Uh, in other words, we are generating no embedding and uh, generate the, the prediction result at the same time. Here is the organization of this lecture. This lecture will consist of two parts. In the first part, we will introduce to you the typical method for semi-supervised and uh, unsupervised GIO. The second part is uh, try is introduce you the application of GIO, in including we will show you how can it be applied to text mining, recommended system, analysis detection, time series prediction, and the tabular data prediction. Let's go first with unsupervised graph representation learning. Before introduce unsupervised GIO, uh, we really need to uh, quickly recap a world embedding in NLP. The idea is that uh, given the test corpus, we want to generate uh, the embedding for every world, a low, low dimensional embedding vector. The main idea behind world embedding is that if two worlds they are share similar context in the sentence. They will have similar embedding vector. So we can uh, in that a word one encoding vector as an input and 
try to use a hidden layer to predict its context world. If we can successfully make such prediction, then we can extract the hidden layer as the so-called world embedding vector. Because uh, if two words have similar meaning, they may have similar uh, context world, then the embedding vector can encode the corresponding semantics. This idea can be extended to unsupervised GIL. Given a graph, we want to have sentence. A sentence is a sequence of words, so we need to use any no sampling method to generate no sequence. Then we believe that if two no i that share a common context nodes, then these two node uh, should have a similar semantics. Then we want to map this node into the embedding space, then have them close to each other. So based on this idea, uh, we can input the node sequence into the uh, wall embedding model that's Gigram uh, to generate the corresponding node embedding vector. In other words, our goal is to encode nodes so that similarity in the embedding space can approximate no similarity in the original graph. Now, we need to define two things. The first thing is the similarity uh, in the graph. The second thing is that uh, how can we encode node uh, to generate uh, the uh, corresponding embedding? We have already shown that uh, the shallow neural network structure can be used as the encoder. Now we need to define the similarity, uh, which is uh, the core of embedding. We want uh, the similarity, for example, that product result to approximate something that can encode no similarity in the original graph. Similarity here means being in context with each other. It can also be considered that two nodes share common neighbors. We will introduce you to approach uh, that can uh, model no similarity uh, to generate no embedding. The first, is, the first is matrix vectorization based, and the second is random work based approach. In matrix vectorization based approach, uh, we want to construct a matrix that can depict the similarity between nodes, so that the dark product of uh, two nodes embedding can approximate. The first approach uh, we want to show you is the graph wrap. You can see the k hub neighbor to uh, compute the similarity matrix, which means that uh, if two nodes they are k hub away from each other, we will consider uh, such two nodes are similar with each other. For example, if k we take k as one. Uh, then the matrix A would be the address matrix. We can also consider the second half or the uh, three half uh, neighbor to be the similarity matrix. A similar idea uh, can be realized uh, using uh, the hope method. The hope method measures the similarity uh, by the overlap between two nodes neighbor. If two nodes, they are uh, share more common neighbor, they will get higher uh, similarity values in this matrix S, so that the dark product of two nodes embedding can approximate. The second approach is random work based embedding. We want the dark product of two nodes embedding to approximate the probability that two nodes U and V occur on a random work over the graph, uh, which means that uh, we can using the random work that start from a certain node U and to visit other nodes. If a certain node V there has higher probability to be visiting uh, by the random work start from U, then such two nodes will be considered as uh, has higher similarity, then that can be uh, considered as a target uh, for the that product to approximate. There are two good things when we use random work to generate no similarity. The first is expressivity. Random work provides flexible stochastic definition of no similarity because uh, it can incorporate both local neighbor, for example, one or two half neighbor, or even high order neighborhood information so that uh, two nodes can better be distinguished from each other. The second is about 
uh, efficiency. In metric filtration based approach, we need to uh, consider all pair of, of nodes uh, for training and no uh, embedded learning. Uh, instead, uh, for random work based approach, we, what we need to do is to consider the node pair that are called occur in the random work sample node sequence. In the optimization of random work based node representation learning, there are three steps. First, uh, we need to use a certain sampling strategy R to perform short random works that start from each node in the graph. Second, the random work based sampling starting from node U will generate a set of visit nodes. The visit node set is considered as the context of node U. We should notice that this context node is a multi set because nodes can be visited multiple times on the random walk. Third, our goal is to maximize the probability of predicting every node's use context node V given its representation Z. We sum up uh, the log probability over each node and its context and has it as a minimization problem. It is important um, to note uh, such an objective is to generate node representations that maximize the likelihood of nodes being in each other's context sampled by random work. We can say that this approach is to maximize the likelihood of random work's co-occurrence between nodes. We can implement the context prediction probabilities using the softmax function whose input is the dot product of two nodes representation vector. In other words, given embedding vectors of nodes U and V, if they are context of each other in the random works, we want their dot product generates a higher prediction probability based on softmax function. Let's put these things together. Now we have a more concrete objective than in all nodes representation vectors so that this loss function can be minimized. The derived embeddings are expected to encode the similarity measured by random work sampling. We can see that this objective is the same as the skigram model that is used to optimize word embeddings based on sentence-based context. We want words U and V to have similar word embedding if they are context to each other in a sentence. While learning no representations based on the Squigram model uh, to reduce the high computational complexity that comes from the normalization terms of the softmax function, we can perform negative sample. We, we can approximate the objective by decompose it to two parts with the Skimoi function. The first part um, is to accurately predict node's context, which is to make node in each other's context has similar embeddings. The second part is to mislead the context prediction by making node embeddings are similar to some negative samples. These next examples are usually far away from a node's context. This can be realized by simply doing random sampling over all nodes in the graph. Therefore, um, instead of doing the normalization uh, using all nodes, we can normalize against some random negative sample nodes. After understanding how node representations can be learned, we will have one fundamental question. How to implement the sampling strategy with random work? There are two sampling strategies, which is correspond to two unsupervised graph representation learning methods. The first is to perform fixed length and unbiased random work starting from each node in the graph to visit nodes with equal probabilities. Since the distributions of nodes degree in social graph follow power law distribution, 
same as the distribution of more occurrence frequency in sentence in corpus like Wikipedia. We can ensure that uh, the Squidward Magazine Linux can uh, correctly work when generating no embeddings. The unsupervised uh, graph representation method is termed as uh, deep work. The other typical unsupervised graph representation learning method is uh, no to vector. The idea of no to vector is to apply a bias random work mechanism to sample the context. The bias random work allows uh, the control of context being toward local or global perspectives. The local and global context are balanced by a working like a breadth first search and the depth first search, respectively. Uh, for example, uh, if working like a breadth first search, starting from no U, uh, we may have S1, S2, and S3 as the context node. If working uh, like depth first search, we may have S4 and S5 uh, and S6 as the context node. To have a structural property um, like uh, breadth first search or uh, depth first search, the bias random work mechanism proposed by NotoVect used two hyperparameters, P and Q. The return probability P let a random work tend to return back to the previous nodes, uh, focusing on modeling the neighborhood of a node as the context. The in out hyperparameter Q uh, make the random walk move outward like that first search or inwards like uh, breath first search. We can properly design the value of, of P and Q uh, to either explore farther away from the study node or uh, focus on the local neighboring nodes uh, of the study nodes. We can say that uh, P and Q proposed by random walk uh, bias random work allow us to have a flexibility to encode different kinds of context. Here is the performance result on the task of no classification, in which no two vector is performed and combined compared with deep work. It can be found that uh, no two vector uh, consistently uh, lead to better F1 score uh, under different training ratios and across uh, different data sets. Such results uh, bring an important insight. That is, high order neighbors from the study node can better characterize the pattern of each node, leading to high quality feature representations. Uh, given the fact that high order uh, neighbors explored by a uh, bias random wall does bring performance improve as reports by uh, low to vector. We think that uh, the main idea of high order neighbors is to predict the global structure of the graph. We are talking about the global information of graph. Uh, the community structure is an important aspect. Uh, a community is a set of nodes that are tightly connected uh, with each other. Nodes uh, tend to have more common neighbors with uh, communities. Nodes uh, belong to different communities uh, tend to have no common neighbors. Also, thought, uh, no two vector can explore higher order neighbors as the global information. The community structure are not fully used. A potential extension to further boost the quality of node representation vectors is to let the uh, embedding learning encode uh, the community structures. A recent idea on crossing enhanced uh, graph representation learning is proposed to fulfill the goal of encoding community structures. Given the original graph, the graph coarsening mechanisms is to group nodes uh, to communities and accordingly construct a supergraph uh, that is used to depict the relationship between communities. The supergraph is believed to have rich global information, uh, 
compared to no uh, sequence sample by random walks. And we want the final no representation uh, has such global information. In fact, we can repeatedly perform the cross-linking step to not only have the first level supergraph, a higher level supergraph can be generated from performing community detection algorithm on its immediately um, lower uh, level supergraph. If we perform the cross-linking uh, mechanism two times, we can obtain two supergraph with uh, different granularities. After obtaining the supergraphs, we can perform uh, typical graph representation learning methods uh, like what we just introduced, not to vect and uh, deep work to generate feature representations of every node uh, in every graph. Uh, from the original graph to all of the corresponding uh, supergraphs. By collecting and uh, concatenating a node's representations in original graph and the representations in all of its belonging supergraph super nodes, we can derive the final uh, node representations, which is split to encode multigram global information. Okay, uh, let's see how does the closing graph representation learning performed on the task of node classification. The x axis is the times of performing uh, closing. The red circle highlight the performance of the graph representation learning without closing. They are the F1 score uh, of the feature representation uh, generated by the original uh, GIO like uh, deep work and node vector. It can be clearly found that uh, only performing the crossing one time, uh, the performance uh, can get significantly uh, boosted. The performance improve is consistent on both uh, no to vector and uh, uh, deep work. This result demonstrates the power of encoding growth of information into the learning of uh, no representations. By visualizing the no uh, representation vectors uh, generated by a uh, node vector and its closing version, we can apparently observe that the closing base node vector is able to better separate nodes with different labels, while pushing those uh, with the same label to be close to each other. Such results directly reveal the power of encoding community structures into no representations. Also, the unsupervised graph representation learning can convert useful information from neighborhood uh, to no embeddings. There are still only three weakness points, which come from the shallow encoder. First, shallow encoding requires a large number of learnable parameters. Each node is associated with a set of trainable weights. No weight sharing mechanism is established among nodes to reduce model complexity and improve time efficiency. Second, unsupervised graph representation learning is uh, transductive. The transductivity uh, means that we cannot generate feature representations for nodes that are not seen during training. In other words, if there are new coming nodes at the testing stage, we cannot utilize the unsupervised graph representation model to directly generate their embeddings. We need to rerun the entire model to regenerate all nodes representation again. The third weakness is very apparent. The typical unsupervised graph representation learning cannot incorporate uh, no attributes or row nodes features. Methods like uh, deep work and node vec uh, focus on encoding local structural neighborhood. No attributes cannot be properly utilized. 
to deal with uh, this issue of unsupervised grab representation learning, we need to move to semi-supervised grab representation learning, which is also called a uh, graph neural network. It is a learning processing that combines uh, feature representation learning and the downstream text chaining together. Basically, uh, we want to encode every node in a graph uh, using the model structure with, with multiple layers of nonlinear transformations. Just like a deep neural network or convolutional neural networks, by staking multiple layers, uh, we expect better to extract uh, effective features and have them encode in no embeddings. We may expect a new convolution mechanism, something like um, graph convolutions, uh, to be the layers uh, in the neural network structure. And at the same time, we want we can put the downstream task, such as a uh, no classification and link prediction, as the training target uh, to let the back propagation accordingly update uh, all of the model weights. Now, there are some notations that you need to know before introducing the techniques details of graph neural network. Assume we have a graph uh, G uh, equal to V and E. Uh, v is the node set and A is the adjacency uh, matrix, uh, assume binary uh, information. X is a matrix of node features and the V is a node in uh, the entire node set. N of V uh, is the uh, set of nodes of uh, node V. Uh, node features, uh, for example, like in social networks, are uh, user profiles and the user posts. When there is no uh, node features uh, in the graph data, we can use in either uh, indicator vectors, such as one high coding of a node, or a vector of constant ones uh, to uh, be the uh, no features, initial no features for graph neural network. A naive approach uh, to have uh, the graph and model by neural networks is uh, using the uh, adjacency vectors uh, of each node uh, to be the model input. Uh, and then let uh, multiple hidden layers uh, to learn uh, the feature representations, which is chained together with the downstream text like no uh, classifications. However, uh, this approach has some critical issues. Uh, for example, uh, we will have the number of model parameters up to the number of nodes in the graph. Given the learning of model ways is specialized to a graph with a fixed number of nodes, it is not possible to apply the neural network models to the graph of different sizes. In addition, uh, since uh, the model ways are tied uh, with a, a specific order of elements in the input vectors, which means that this approach is sensitive to no ordering. A slight change or uh, or a slight change of not orders uh, in the adjacency uh, matrix can make this approach not work. Another idea come from convolutional neural network. Um, it seems uh, we can treat the adjacency matrix as an image. Then we can uh, learn the weights of convolutional uh, filters uh, to scan the feature map and uh, generate no embeddings. In fact, this idea is very like the fundamental operation of graph neural network, uh, but we still need a method to incorporate uh, node attributes or node feature. However, uh, please do remember that uh, nodes in the graph has no particular ordering. Nodes in a graph is not like uh, the image data in which each, each pixel point has a fixed position. Graph data is uh, permutation invariant. Therefore, it seems we cannot use mechanisms like convolution 
uh, to scan the graph structure with sliding windows. Nevertheless, uh, a key idea of uh, convolutional neural network can be steadily borrow and extend uh, it to graph data. Let's assume uh, that um, we have a convolutional field, a convolutional layer with uh, a three by three filter. Such a filter uh, is used to uh, scan uh, the image from top to down and from left to right. In each computation of applying the filter, we can use uh, each, uh, each weight associated with the filter to multiply with the corresponding value in the image feature map. Then we can start up all the weighted compute value to be the output of convolutional uh, filter at this sliding position. We can say that uh, the filter use the learn weight uh, W uh, to transform the message from a center position in the feature map and all of its neighbors. Using the summation to add it up uh, to be the output. While the feature map in an image is the grid-like structure, which is uh, which can be uh, uh, treated as a special case of general graph structure. Maybe we can treat the filter weights as the uh, edge weights between a center node and its neighbors. And the weighted sum is applied uh, to each node and its neighbor nodes in the graph. Now, uh, we can utilize uh, this idea of learning edge weights and consider the weighted sum among neighbors to generate the update output value of each uh, center node or target node in the graph. Based on uh, the idea of the sum of learnable weights applied into neighbor nodes, uh, we can say that uh, we are using each node's neighborhoods to define how to compute its update feature representation. We can update each node's embedding from its neighbors and its neighbor of neighbors, second half neighbors. Since uh, the embedding updating uh, involve learnable weights that are in charge of given proper importance value to no features, the graph neural network is essentially to uh, learn how to propagate uh, messages across graph uh, for every node. When computing a node's update representation, uh, we are propagating and aggregating information from its neighboring nodes. In graph neural network, a hidden layer is created uh, to update each node's embedding from its immediate uh, neighbors, which one have neighbors. Therefore, uh, constructing a two-layer graph neural network means that we are updating all nodes embeddings uh, two times in other words, each node can aggregate information from its first hat and the second half neighbors. In fact, Graham Neural Network is doing uh, neighborhood aggregation for each node uh, in a repeated manner. We are aggregate, we are generating node embedding uh, based on uh, using uh, based on their local uh, structural neighborhood. Such a process can be elaborated uh, using these pictures. If we are going to update uh, the embedding of target node A here, uh, we need to obtain the learnable uh, weights based on some uh, neural network mechanism so that uh, they can be used to aggregate the current uh, feature representation of uh, their neighbors uh, B and C and D uh, using weighted sum. If we uh, stack uh, two neural network, graph neural network layers, the embedding of uh, node A can further receive information from its second half neighbors. For example, the second half uh, nodes A and C here uh, are the neighbors of it. Uh, the first half neighbor B of the target node A. To this end, 
we need to define the concrete uh, neural network structure uh, to learn uh, the weights uh, for uh, neighborhood aggregation. To better el uh, elaborate uh, the idea of utilizing the mechanism of neighborhood aggregation to generate feature representation vector for each node, we can visualize the uh, computation graph of each node. A computation graph uh, is the subgraph of the uh, entire graph. A computational graph is used to depict how a node embedding can be produced uh, from its neighborhood. To be more specific, if our uh, web neural network stack uh, two layers, uh, we will expand uh, the target nodes, uh, first half neighbor, and all immediate neighbors of every first half uh, neighbors to form the target nodes computation graph. The paths, the paths uh, come from a uh, node excluding the target node uh, to the target node, uh, define how message are uh, aggregates and pass it toward the target node in a layer by layer manner. With the current understanding till now, you can receive, uh, you can consider that the graph neural network model can be of uh, uh, arbitrary uh, depth. That says we can stack. Uh, grab new network layers as many as we want. Each node uh, has an update embedding at uh, each uh, grab new network layer. No embedding in a certain GNN layer is generated from layer uh, in immediate uh, previous layer. No embedding at uh, layer zero are the input feature vector, which are uh, which can be something like user attributes or item properties. The generation of layer K embeddings uh, receive messages from nodes they are K hub away from every target node. Now, okay, now uh, based on the current concept uh, you have understood, we can uh, formally define the mechanism of neighborhood aggregation uh, in learning graph neural network. In the uh, green highlight, uh, we first use a uh, nose feature vector as the initial vector for general learning. To generate a uh, node with embedding at layer L plus one uh, in this blue area, we first produce the average of all neighbors embedding at the current layer layer L. Then we use weighted combine between the derived uh, neighbor aggregates average vector and the current layers no width embedding highlight uh, by the red area here. The trainable weight matrix WMB can be depicted by a neural network layer. Then uh, an activation functions such as redo uh, highlight by uh, this uh, yellow area uh, can be applied to perform nonlinear transformation. This equation realizes the neighborhood aggregation within a particular graph neural network layers. Okay, we can uh, stack such a kinds of neighborhood aggregation there up to L layers, as highlighted in purple here. And uh, eventually, we can have the known representation vector at the final layer L as highlighted in pink here. Great. Now you have known how to construct the structure of graph neural network. And uh, please do remember that it is a kind of unsupervised graph representation learning. Okay, when learning the uh, neural network model, we need to have it trained with a certain loss function. The graph neural network learning generates no embeddings, which are expected uh, to encode something depicted by the loss function. In other words, uh, we need to define a loss function on the embeddings. 
here you need to know uh, the model parameter uh, in gram neural network learning. They are uh, matrix W and B. We can fit this embedding into any loss functions and uh, run optimization like uh, stochastic gradient descent to change the model uh, parameter of gram neural network. Uh, it should be uh, noticed that the way uh, matrix W and B are defined uh, on every layer of graph neural network. We can say that um, each node embedding Z is a function of input graph. We need to use uh, embedding vector Z uh, to predict something so that the back propagation mechanism can uh, be used to update all trainable model ways of QF neural network, which is denoted by a uh, big theta here. Uh, we can have two choices to perform the uh, graph neural network training. One is uh, supervised training, and uh, the other is uh, unsupervised uh, learning. In supervised uh, graph neural network learning, we consider a uh, known for example, no value regression as the prediction task and uh, use, use uh, L2 known as the loss function. Uh, we can also uh, consider no classification as the prediction task and use the cross entropy uh, to be the loss function. The task of link prediction can be also used as the uh, training target uh, under the setting of supervised graph neural network learning. Uh, if we cannot uh, have any label information available, uh, the graph structure itself can be used to serve as the supervision signal. Okay, no matter uh, which manner is used to design the loss functions, uh, we need to uh, use the generate no representations to predict uh, the training target. Uh, in, uh, in unsupervised uh, graph neural network trainings, our goal is to encode the graph structure into non embeddings like unsupervised graph representation learning, uh, for example, a node vector uh, and deep work uh, that we uh, just introduced previously. Unsupervised graph neural ne network trainings, one knows that uh, are context of each other uh, to have similar embedding vector. Or we can uh, say that um, nodes, they are neighbors of each other, or nodes, they, are, uh, they have many common neighbors or nodes that are connected by a shorter path. Uh, such kinds of nodes uh, should, have, should be similar with uh, one another, and they should, have, uh, they should also have similar node embeddings. We can use a uh, cross entropy uh, to be the loss function by feeding uh, the no embedding uh, the no embedding vectors of no u and v uh, to be a cert to a certain decoder DEC here. Uh, we want the decode result to accurate uh, predict uh, uh, layer similarity. Uh, y u v. Uh, Equal, if yuv equal to 1 uh, means that two nodes are similar. The decoder can be either uh, using uh, dark products or something like a uh, softmax function. It is important to now know that uh, no similarity is exactly uh, what graph representation aim to preserve. The similarity can be defined by random work uh, mechanism uh, used uh, by node vector or deep walk, or defined by a uh, matrix uh, factorization, or defined by a uh, node proximity that is measured by, uh, for example, Jaka coefficient or Adamic ADA major. Uh, in supervised graph neural network training, uh, it is easier to understand because we need to use the direct node embedding to train with a certain downstream task in an end-to-end -end manner. 
Um, typical downstream tests include um, no classification, link prediction, and the grab uh, classification. Uh, let's take no classification as an example. We can train a grab neural network model to generate no embeddings uh, and uh, directly use them to predict whether a user node uh, is a human or bot in an online social network. In such a case, uh, the cross entropy uh, is use the loss function, and uh, we uh, can use no labels as the uh, supervision signal uh, for end-to-end -end GNN training. Okay, uh, now uh, let's put the main component of grand neural network design together. To so design a grand neural network model, first we need to define the neighborhood aggregation function, which is something like a weighted sum of a node's embedding and uh, the average of its neighbor's embedding vector. The weights are expected uh, to be learnable. Second, uh, we need to define a loss function on the embeddings. The loss function uh, determines uh, what no embedding and to preserve. It can be either supervised or unsupervised. The third component is to construct a batch of computational graph. Each computational graph is used to update a certain node embedding using a neighborhood aggregation. In each iteration of graph neural network training, we train on a set of nodes with their corresponding computation graph. The last design is used to uh, derive a graph neural network bar model weight uh, to generate the final node embeddings. Node can be observed can be uh, observed once during uh, general training or uh, can be nodes that uh, we never seen before at the training stage. If, in, if uh, we are at the uh, later case, uh, we assume that there are uh, some new coming nodes and their corresponding links to existing um, nodes they are observed at the training stage. Therefore, we can apply the weight matrix uh, at multiple graph neural network layer uh, to aggregate uh, new coming new coming nodes uh, neighborhood and generate uh, their feature representations. A chain uh, graph neural network model can be applied to uh, new coming nodes uh, that are not observed at the training stage. Uh, a nose, a model's weights uh, can be applied to unseen nodes, uh, means that such a node can do inductive learning. We can say graph neural network has the inductivity capability. The fundamental reason is that um, GNN can have the uh, can the fundamental reason is that uh, the same neighborhood aggregation um, parameters are shared uh, for all nodes in the graph, uh, not only not just the observed uh, nodes but also the new coming nodes. In other words, the model parameter weights matrix uh, W and B are not specialized to um, particular nodes. All nodes in the graph uh, uh, have the same set of model parameter W and B to perform neighborhood aggregation. Uh, even different nodes have different number of neighbors. Each node aggregation uses the same set of parameter for all nodes. Uh, to this end, uh, the number of model parameter uh, is sublinear uh, to the number of nodes in the graph. In short, grand neural network can be generalized to unseen nodes uh, due to uh, such a kinds of weighted uh, weight sharing mechanism across all nodes in the graph. Okay, um, let's uh, look more about the inductivity capability of graph neural network. 
the inductive learning of graph neural network allow uh, us to train on one graph and uh, generalize to uh, new graphs. Uh, the learn model weight can be used to not only generate uh, the embedding of node in the source graph, but also transfer to generate uh, the embedding of nodes in another entirely unseen graph. For example, uh, we can train the graph neural network model on the Twitter social network and utilize the graph neural network model way uh, to generate no embedding uh, for nodes on uh, Instagram uh, social network. Uh, another scenario is uh, what we just present, uh, the node-wise inductivity capability. We can train the graph neural network on a particular snapshot of graph. Uh, in many applications, there are always uh, newcoming nodes or users arrive, which are unseen at the training stage. The inductivity of graph neural network allows us to generate embedding uh, for new uh, nodes in, uh, in an on-the-fly manner. Okay, here is the quick summary of graph neural networks. Uh, graph neural networks generates uh, the feature representations of nodes by aggregation neighborhood information. The weight sharing mechanism uh, across nodes uh, for same layer aggregation uh, provide the inductivity capability. Until uh, now, you have seen uh, the framework of uh, graph neural network learning. You might remember that we need to uh, have a method to learn the model way uh, WMB at each uh, graph neural network layer. Yes, uh, besides simply way to combine the target node and the average of neighbor nodes and bases, we can have different options to implement the neural network uh, uh, to obtain uh, the trainable matrix uh, WMB. In the following slide, uh, we will introduce you three well-known graph neural network uh, variants that adopt different strategies uh, to implement uh, neural network here. The first is a graph convolutional network, uh, GCN. Graph convolutional network is a slight variation uh, on uh, the neighborhood aggregation. As you can see, the graph neural network neighborhood aggregation, uh, the, the GCN neighborhood aggregation use uh, the same uh, weight matrix W uh, to transform the normalized embedding obtained from neighbors and uh, itself. Uh, at each layer k. You may have already found that there are two differences uh, from the general graph neural network neighborhood aggregation. The first is uh, that GCN is no longer using a separate wet matrix B uh, to transform self tucking node V. The tucking node V share the same uh, wet matrix W with uh, neighbor embedding uh, average. The second is the per neighbor normalization here. Instead of uh, using only the degree of the tucking node for normalization. Such a simple configuration in graph convolutional network uh, can lead to better performance on downstream tasks. It is because, uh, first, uh, more model parameter sharing are uh, considered and uh, used to avoid the uh, possible overfitting issue. Second, uh, graph convolutional network uh, downweight uh, the message from high degree neighbors. A high degree node can be a popular guide, uh, for example, the celebrity in social network. Popular neighbor, popular neighbor uh, might not have uh, a high impact on the target nodes. Therefore, graph convolutional network GCN 
uh, use the degree of a neighbor uh, to normalize uh, the weighted embedding on neighbors. In other words, GCM believe that uh, believe a message uh, for uh, unpopular neighbors such as uh, personal or private friends in a social network are more important uh, to uh, be reflect in the learning of uh, no embedding. Okay, so far we have seen that uh, GCN aggregates the neighbor messages by taking their weighted average. Now uh, we want to ask uh, is if we can have other effective design of uh, neighborhood aggregation. Can we do better? The second graph neural network implementation uh, is graph stage. This equation show the neighborhood aggregation mechanism of graph stage. Graph stage use a function AGG here uh, to generalize the embedding aggregation from the target nodes V's neighbors. Uh, the AGG function can be any differentiable functions that map the set of embedding vector in the neighborhood uh, to a single vector. If we simply use mean to be the AGG function, it will look like uh, the general graph neural network form. Then graph stage uh, concentrates, uh, concatenates uh, the weight uh, transform aggregate vector uh, with uh, the weighted, uh, the weight transform uh, self vector here. The concatenation operations make the update embeddings capture more information about uh, the target node itself. As you can see, uh, the weighted transform every aggregate vector uh, from the neighbor uh, concat uh, with the weighted transform uh, self vector uh, for the target node V here. And uh, they are combined together, fit into a uh, nonlinear activation function like we do here. Uh, the original graph stage paper proposed three basic variants of the AGG function, including mean, uh, poor, and uh, uh, long short term memory model. The mean aggregation takes a, a weighted average of nodes. The, pool, the pooling uh, aggregation transforms neighbor vectors using multi layer perspectrum and applies semantic uh, vector functions like element wise mean or mass to obtain the aggregate result. The long short term memory. Uh, aggregation apply uh, the well-known LSTM model uh, to a random reshuffle of neighbors. And taking the outputs of the last uh, LSTM hidden state uh, to be the final embedding uh, of each node. Uh, you may have found that uh, both GCN and graph stage treat neighbors equally in neighbor aggregation. Uh, every no neighbor nodes equally contributes to the aggregation in GCN and graph stage. However, uh, it is not always this case. It is very common that uh, some neighbor nodes can be utilized to better represent uh, the target nodes while others are not so important. For example, a user can have both close friends or just acquaintance. We want to have a new neighborhood attention mechanism to automatically give higher contribution value to important neighbors so that the no embeddings can encode more effective information from neighbors and better distinguish uh, from each other uh, for nodes in the graph. The third uh, graph neural network implementations, uh, graph attention network, GAT, is uh, created uh, to realize uh, this idea of uh, given different importance 
啊、uh, ，to 啊、uh, different neighbors. GAT Ackerman's 啊、uh, basic graph neural network model 啊、uh, 啊、uh, with an attention mechanism. Uh, here uh, is the equation. Here in these equations, you can find that、um, GAT is very similar to、uh, GCN and GraphSage、uh, to utilize each、uh, neighbor nodes embedding edge here、uh, for aggregation with a weighted transformation W.、Uh, GAT is also the same as、uh, GCN to using. The weighted、uh, weight weight sharing mechanism over、uh, neighbors and the target node V. The key difference is、uh, the attention weight alpha here, which is associated with each edge that connects the target node V and、uh, its neighbor node U. Grab attention network allow、uh, multi head attention here、uh, to. It estimates the importance of age weight、uh, from from different perspectives. The default number of attention head is three、uh, in GAT. As you can see in this figure,、uh, we have three set of attention weights alpha highlighted in different colors between the target node uh, and uh, uh, all of its neighbors. Okay, you can find that、uh, the target node embedding is H one, and、uh, each of its neighbor node embeddings uh, are uh, from H two to H、uh, six, and、uh, the alpha value is associated on、uh, all of this H way, including this、uh, self loop H. We want to use uh, this uh, attention way associated on this H、uh, uh, to. Learn for neighborhood aggregation. Then either、uh, concatenations or a simple average over、uh, multiple heads can be used to generate the aggregation result. To implement、uh, grab attention network,、uh, we can utilize different attention models to learn the attention weight alpha. The original GAT paper used a、uh, weight、uh, matrix Q uh, to uh, first transform node embeddings, then concatenate the two nodes transform vector,、uh, along with another transformation by the noble weight A here. After applying the leaky ReLU nonlinear activation transformation, the soft max function is used to produce the final attention weight alpha. Such a kind of、uh, attention implementation can be extended to multiple head、uh, by weight、uh, by different weight initialization for learnable matrix Q and A. With the derived attention weight alpha, a simple average over all attention weighted aggregation from neighbor nodes, including the target node, can be used to produce the aggregation result. Okay, here、uh, we briefly summarize、uh, this part of graph neural network.、Uh, we can say that、uh, graph neural network、uh, borrow the idea、uh, from classic、uh, neural network and generalize the layer-wise information aggregation mechanism、uh, to graph data. Graph neural network is to encode、uh, local pattern of each node into the final. Feature representation vector. We can say no embedding generated by graph neural network has、uh, locality. In addition, a key idea in graph neural network is that、uh, for a particular layer, the weight sharing mechanism、uh, for neighborhood aggregation is applied over all nodes in the graph. Weight sharing allow Grand neural network to learn universal applicable patterns、uh, in the from the graph. If we want to、uh, use a sentence、uh, to describe a grand neural network,、uh, we can say that 
Uh, gram neural network updates known representation vectors by repeatedly um, transforming and aggregating neighboring uh, nodes representations. The training of gram neural network can be either end-to-end -end training with a downstream task-like node classification and uh, link prediction, or context prediction uh, in an unsupervised manner like node vector and uh, deep work. GNN has three uh, advantages. First, uh, in graph neural network, uh, the number of model parameters is independent of the number of nodes in the graph. The parameters in GNN layers uh, depend only on the dimension of the feature input. The number of parameters is also significantly smaller than the graph size because of the weight sharing mechanism. Second, it is also important to remember that graph neural network is capable of inductive learning. The learn graph neural network models can be used to generate embedding of node in the original uh, in new graph or produce embedding for new coming unseen nodes in the original graph. Okay, third, uh, you may also remember that uh, unsupervised graph representation learning like node vector and deep work encode only structural proximity between nodes into uh, node embeddings. Semi-supervised um, graph representation learning uh, like graph neural network can naturally incorporate no feature, which are used as the initial vectors of graph neural network for the first layer neighborhood aggregation. In other words, the learning of graph neural network is to iteratively aggregate no features over local neighborhoods. Okay, um, let's wall up uh, the typical approaches uh, to graph representation learning. Uh, given a graph, uh, the structure top and the, the structure topology, the first approach is unsupervised graph representation learning, which can convert the topologies to vectors for all nodes in the graph. The output is no embedding that encode the structural proximity between nodes so that no uh, that, that has higher, highly similar to each other can have a similar feature representation vector in the embedding space. Based on different definition of similarity uh, to be preserved, classical unsupervised graph representation method like uh, it, it includes uh, graph wrap, uh, hop, uh, deep work, and node to vector. After obtaining the embedding of nodes, we need to use them to chain for downstream tasks. It is a two-stage procedure. The first stage is to generate node embedding in an unsupervised manner, and the second stage is to predict the target label using no embedding in, an, in a supervised manner. If we want to further consider no feature or no attributes into no representation learning and uh, want to uh, have uh, the learning uh, chain, we need to uh, have the learning chain with downstream tasks together like no to no classification and the link prediction. The second uh, approach, uh, semi-supervised graph representation learning uh, can be applied. Uh, this, uh, this approach can be also called graph neural network, GNN. GNN is to fuse uh, graph topology and node feature when generating node embeddings and uh, preserving the downstream labels. It is an end-to-end -end training procedure. Graph neural network uh, can produce node embeddings and predict the target label at the same time. Okay, great. Now you may already have some sense about graph representation at this time. Let's return to the overview of this lecture. We have covered the typical methods for both unsupervised and uh, semi-supervised graph representation learning. Before entering into the application of graph representation learning and graph neural network, 
within it is worthwhile uh, to have a detour on an important variant of unsupervised graph representation need. After that, we will present you five applications based on graph machine learning and deep learning. The detour is to introduce you about attribute graph representation learning, which belong to unsupervised graph representation learning. Attribute graph representation learning has another well-known terminology, attribute uh, network embedding. Even uh, a weighted adjacency matrix W, uh, which can also be a simple adjacency matrix, and an attribute matrix A, in which each row uh, is the feature vector of a node in the graph. The goal of attribute graph representation learning uh, is the same as the general unsupervised GIL, generating a low dimensional uh, embedding vector, HI, uh, for every node I in the graph. Uh, we will derive uh, an embedding matrix H. The embedding vector of each node is expected to preserve uh, no proximity uh, in both uh, graph and attributes. In other words, nodes with similar graph neighborhood or attributes need to have similar embedding vector. Comparing to the general unsupervised uh, graph representation learning, our goal is to further encode the similarity between node attributes into the future representations of nodes. It is apparently to understand that attributes graph representation learning can further incorporate no attributes or no features, just like graph neural network. We will present you uh, several typical methods of attributes unsupervised graph representation learning. First, attribute graph representation learning can be implemented based on the te techniques of matrix factorization. The idea is to incorporate known features into matrix factorization for the learning of known embedding. Such a kind of matrix factorization based attribute uh, graph representation learning comes from the area of recommendation systems. So we can have the proper statement as that um, given row matrix, row feature matrix X that depicts the vector of user attributes and also given column feature matrix Y that represent the vectors of item property or attributes. Besides, uh, we also have an observation set omega. Uh, which contain the observed user item interactions and uh, depicts by a uh, matrix M. This matrix M uh, can be considered as a bipartite graph. We can factorize uh, the matrix M uh, to obtain the embedding vectors uh, based on this objective. Basically, we want matrix M uh, to be factorized uh, to two matrices. W and H. The matrix uh, multiplication of uh, W and H can reconstruct uh, matrix uh, M. To incorporate feature or attribute vector of user and items, X and Y, respectively, we use X and Y uh, to multiply uh, before W and the multiply uh, after H, respectively so that uh, the factorized matrices W and H can be affected by feature matrices uh, X and Y. To be more specific, uh, to correctly reconstruct the matrix M, the learned embedding matrices uh, W and H are required to work together with feature matrices W and X and Y. Therefore, we can expect uh, w and H uh, can encode both structural information from matrix M and the feature and attribute information from matrix X and uh, Y. Eventually, we can use uh, the matrix W uh, 
uh, multiplied by x and uh, the matrix h multiplied by y as the final embeddings of nodes. The second method we want to introduce for attributes on supervised graph representation learning is TADW, text associates deep work. In addition to have the graph structure and the adjacency matrix M as the model input, we further have a text feature matrix T, which means that uh, each node is associated with a free text feature vector. TADW is also a kind of matrix factorization based embedding learning method. We factorize matrix M to two matrices W and H so that matrices uh, W and H can be affected by the text matrix T. In other words, to correctly reconstruct matrix uh, M, learnable matrices W and H need to work together with uh, matrix T, which is such an uh, implementation. Uh, matrices W and H need uh, uh, can encode both graph structure uh, using matrix M and the text feature uh, using uh, matrix T. Eventually, we can use the concatenation of matrix W and uh, the matrix uh, H multiplied T as the final embeddings. The third method is uh, accelerate attribute network embedding, AANE. The idea of AANE is to preserve both uh, the similarity between no attributes and the similarity between uh, no connections in the graph at the same time. Here we first uh, provide the uh, um, notations. Uh, matrix A is the feature matrix or attribute matrix for all nodes. Matrix S depicts the pairwise similarity between nodes computed from matrix A. Matrix W represents the graph structure and can be the adjacency matrix. ANE wants to learn the embedding matrix H and wants its self multiplication can approximate its similarity matrix which is uh, computed by uh, pairwise no similarity based on feature matrix A. This is realized by the first turn in the objective function here. Besides, A and E also want to preserve the connection between nodes and expect uh, neighboring nodes to have a similar embedding vector. This is present in the second turn of the objective function. And you want to jointly model the feature proximity and the graph structure proximity during the learning of no embeddings. The next method is um, AR, ANRL, Attribute uh, Network Representation Learning. It is a deep neural network based on supervised graph representation learning method. The input of ANIO is a nose attribute feature vector xi. Then uh, an encoder with multiple hidden layers is used to generate node representation vector here, which is depicted by the middle hidden layer in this, in this figure. ANIO uh, uses the derived node embeddings to perform two tasks. The prediction targets are exactly what no embedding aim to preserve. The first is neighbor enhancement and auto encoder. It is to reconstruct uh, the input no i's attribute vector based on its neighbor's embeddings. We can say um, this part is a, a variant of auto encoder. Okay, to be more specific, the autoencoder is implemented by a uh, T function here. T function produces the reconstruct feature vector of node i, um, denoted as uh, xi hat. 
T function is realized by a uh, weighted average of uh, no ice neighboring nodes and basins. Such an autoencoder based reconstruction nodes uh, can be represented as LAE here. The second prediction task is attribute aware skigram model, uh, whose goal is to minimize the log probability of skigram model based on attribute aware embeddings. You can see uh, this part is skigram, right? Um, yes, this part is nearly the same as node vector. It is to predict. Uh, the target no ice context nodes based on their uptain embeddings from the encoder here. We can use skigram uh, loss uh, function here. Uh, in short, ANIO utilize auto encoder to capture both uh, node attributes and local graph structure and uh, use the skigram model to uh, model uh, both attributes and global structural information. Um, structure deep uh, network embedding SDNE is another deep uh, neural network based on supervised graph representation learning method. SDNE is not for attribute graph representation learning, but we think it is worthwhile to introduce it uh, because it is rare to use deep neural network to learn no embeddings and that SDNE has nice performance. In the next slide, uh, we will show you that SDNE can be extended to attribute graph representation learning. The input of SDNE is a pair of pairs uh, of nodes, i and j's adjacency vectors. A way sharing encoder is used to produce no embeddings, uh, denoted by y here and here. To train the deep encoder, uh, SDNE has two objectives. The first is highlighted in the right part here. It is to constrain the similarity of uh, first order proximity between adjacent nodes i and j. That says, if the sample pair of nodes are either neighbor, SDNE want their embedding to be uh, as similar as possible. So we have the corresponding loss function to let their embedding vector close. The second uh, is highlighted in the uh, lab area here. Uh, it is to reconstruct the second order proximity between nodes I and J. Given that we are simultaneously making uh, nodes I and J embeddings close uh, based on uh, Laplace eigenmap here, the reconstruction of input uh, adjacency vector uh, denoted by x i hat uh, will receive information from no i's neighboring nodes. Eventually, we can put such two loss functions together and uh, for node representation learning. Uh, deep attributed um, node uh, network embedding DNE is an extension of SDNE for attribute graph representation learning. So DNE also um, relies on deep uh, neural network structure. The input of DNE consists of two parts. Uh, one is structural information, the adjacency vector of node i denoted by uh, mi. The other is attribute information, the attribute uh, vector of node i denoted by uh, zi. Vectors mi and zi are fit into a deep auto encoder here, uh, in which the middle layer contain no embedding. DNA has four uh, loss terms in its objective function. The first two loss uh, are based on the output of autoencoder. They are to reconstruct the input adjacency and the attribute vector mi and zi based on the neighbor's nodes embedding. 
uh, we have our LH and the LS as the last turn here. <coughs> the third uh, turn uh, is the first order uh, proximity uh, loss. If two nodes I and J are connected by an edge, uh, DNA utilize their embedding to predict their connection link uh, based on the sycamore function with their duct product. Uh, since we have both topological and attribute uh, deep auto encoders, uh, we can uh, write their first order proximity those together as uh, LF here. Um, the last uh, last term uh, is about uh, consistent and the complementary loss. This loss uh, will enforce two nodes INJs and embeddings to be consistent. Uh, system as possible if they are from the same node, while pushing away them if they are from different nodes. We can say uh, function LF preserve the first order proximity in the graph and attributes at the same time. Next, we briefly introduce the newest state-of-the-art unsupervised attribute graph representation learning method, um, context co-occurrence based uh, network embedding (CONE). The basic idea of CONE is to model context attributes that each knows in diverse patterns and apply the convolutional mechanism uh, to and code positional information by three attributes as a channel. Uh, the learning of context concurrence capture can capture the latent social circles of each node. Uh, visual representations uh, generated by a CONE has been used for downstream tasks, including node classification and link prediction. The experimental results uh, part are present uh, in these two tables demonstrates that CONE can beat all competitors on average score for no classification across five benchmark data sets. We do not uh, give too much detail here uh, for CONE. If you feel interested about CONE, uh, you can visit our uh, CONE paper published uh, in IEEE uh, TKDE. The, the source code is also available in GitHub. The link uh, to CONE paper is also provided here. Uh, finally, uh, this page uh, gives the list of reference paper uh, that are introduced in this lecture, especially for the uh, attributed unsupervised graph representation learning. Okay, uh, this is uh, the end of uh, the introduction of uh, typical graph representation learning and graph neural network. In the next lecture, uh, we will present the second part that especially focuses on how to use graph representation learning for different applications. Thanks for your participation in this recall of live video. Let's meet online uh, for the second part uh, very uh, look forward to seeing you then. Okay, bye bye.